Hi, everybody. I'm Brittany Lewis, a breaking news reporter here at Forbes. Joining me now is Forbes senior contributor, Dr. Marshall Shepard. Dr. Shepard, thank you so much for coming on. It's always great to talk with you, Brittany. Likewise, as you know, the National Weather Service in Los Angeles issued a blizzard warning this week. Before we break down the reason why, can you define for us what is a blizzard? You know, blizzard is one of the most misused terms that I see in meteorology, and I've been in this business a long time. Uh, you often hear people calling any big snowstorm a blizzard. Even here in the south, I'm in the Atlanta area. If we get two inches of snow, you'll see headlines, the blizzard of great blizzard of 2000, whatever. Uh, blizzard has a very specific term, and I want to make sure I actually read it specifically because it's important for your, your viewers and listeners to understand this. Uh, a blizzard really is a storm that has a very specific amount of sustained winter activity. So uh, I want to give you the, the criteria. According to the National Weather Service glossary, here are the definitions for blizzard. Listen, listen carefully because it's important. I, I think some people miss it. Uh, um, conditions prevail for a period of three hours of longer of sustained winds uh, or frequent gusts of over 35 miles per hour, uh, considerable falling and blowing snow, reducing visibility for less than a quarter of a mile. So you have to have sustained conditions. And uh, that's what the National Weather Service Los Angeles is expecting in some of the, the mountainous terrain just to their east. Why do you think the term blizzard is one of the most misused terms in all of meteorology? Well, I just think it over the years, people anecdotally sort of assume that any bad snowstorm is a blizzard. Uh, any snowstorm that has wind is a blizzard. And so I just think it has become commonly misused. Uh, I have a whole list of them that I may write about in Forbes one day of these misused terms, uh, things like heat lightning, for example, and there are some, some others as well. But over time, uh, people have refer to a blizzard as any big snowstorm in the same way that they misuse the term monsoon as a big big rain event when monsoon actually refers to the wind. So, Got it. Well, if you ever break all those down, I would love to have you back on. But let's get to the news of the week. Why did the National Weather Service in Los Angeles issue a blizzard warning? And, and th those blizzard warnings were issued and they, they really have, as of Friday today, are going into effect because the mountains, the so Los Angeles mountains and some of their other mountain peaks uh, there in the area are expecting blizzard conditions in those higher elevations above 4,000 feet. I mean, we could see anywhere from four to seven feet of snow. Uh, I was on the National Weather Service Los Angeles website just before I came on with you. And I am seeing projections and estimates of winds of 50 to 80 miles per hour in some of the higher passes. So you've got whiteout conditions expected from Friday to Saturday in some of the Los Angeles County and Ventura Mountains. And so uh, those certainly uh, rise to the level of what we would consider blizzard conditions. Dr. Shepard, when I saw your article, I knew I had to contact you right away because you, it's not every day you see Los Angeles and Blizzard in the same headline. So how unprecedented is this? Well, even by their own accounts, the National Weather Service Los Angeles tweeted that the last time they issued a blizzard warning uh, would have been around 2006. And so that's uh, 16, 17 years ago. So it's not unprecedented. They certainly uh, have responsibility. And this is a good chance, Brittany, for me to break down for your viewers something. Uh, the National Weather Service has forecast offices all over the country, and they are responsible for a forecast area. So uh, though it might catch people off guard to see blizzard in the National Weather Service Los Angeles, in fact, what we know is that that office is responsible for much of that mountain terrain. And uh, much of the mountainous terrain at higher elevations there in, in the Los Angeles County Mountains and the Vichir Mountains and so forth, they receive more annual snow than many places here in the eastern U.S., but it's certainly at higher elevation. So uh, it's not unprecedented, but it's certainly rare to see blizzard and National Weather Service Los Angeles in the same sentence. I do want to break down a tweet that the National Weather Service of Los Angeles tweeted regarding just this. So this is the tweet. This is not our first blizzard warning ever issued. This is the first since VTEC coding was implemented in 2006. For those of the us, including myself, who aren't meteorologists, 
What does this mean? Well, I'm a meteorologist and I'm still not sure I know what it means. I mean, it's really a, a way of disseminating information. They, uh, they change the format uh, to this VTEC in terms of formatting and disseminating information in sort of more sort of digital formats, more mobile formats. And so I actually felt that tweet was a little jargon heavy because most people reading it aren't going to sort of resonate with VTEC. I think it would have been just as equally effective to say, this is the first time we've implemented this since 2006. We've had a blizzard warning. And I think that would have been a lot more clear to people. Got it. And I know these people live in the mountains. They do receive snow annually, but like the National Weather Service said, this is the first blizzard since 2006. So how can these residents properly prepare? Well, in some cases, you, if you haven't prepared, it's probably too late. I mean, because we're talking about Friday into Saturday. Uh, there are whiteout conditions. Again, four to seven feet of snow, 50 to 80 mile per hour winds. And again, remember, blizzard conditions are uh, those conditions expected over a three-hour period. And so hopefully, I mean, I, to the National Weather Service's credit, I wrote that article a few days ago, uh, earlier in the week. And so there was plenty of time for people to take notice, to prepare, to pay, maybe get out of Dodge if they need to, or not don't go anywhere near those higher elevation regimes, because clearly this was a well-forecasted event many days in advance. And how dangerous are these types of weather events? Should you hunker down? Is there any d categorize how dangerous it is well blizzards are very dangerous in under any circumstances whether you're in higher elevation terrain or not but certainly in such terrain things can be even more treacherous given the fact that you are in higher elevation conditions so i am just hoping that uh, people heeded the warnings of the national weather service that were issued many many days in advance of the actual blizzard conditions which were occurring Friday into the early weeks uh, weekend so people had time to prepare because again I mentioned that I have seen some discussions in the National Weather Service data of 50 to 80 mile per hour winds hurricane force winds are 74 miles per hour so that gives you a reference point for how strong some of these winds are at higher elevation with blowing snow essentially white out conditions expected in parts of the highest terrain. Now, again, the worst conditions are above 4,000 feet and even higher. But again, hopefully people took the warning seriously and, and uh, planned accordingly because uh, this is not something you want to play with. And in fact, uh, this is just part of a coast to coast weather system, Brittany, that we've seen this week. Uh, we've had extreme winter weather from the west coast of the United States up into the Great Plains and extending into the northeastern U.S. with some snow, freezing rain and hazardous conditions. So it is late February, so this is not strange or weird, uh, but it's certainly interesting that we had coast to coast winter conditions from the west coast to the east coast. Can you talk about that more? What areas should really be bracing for impact this weekend, especially? Well, I haven't looked at the late. Some of these areas, uh, like the Great Plains and Midwest, have already been experiencing, you know, things like snow and freezing rain and, and so forth. Uh, I think some of those conditions will be extending into the Northeast if they haven't already at the time of us discussing this. So uh, this has really been a long term event that has been impacting across the country all week. And so hopefully as we get to the end of the weekend, we can bid it adieu. But uh, we still do have a few more weeks of winter. Uh, here in the south where I'm at, we had 80 degree temperatures this week in Atlanta. And so it's really a tale of two air masses here in the south and east. We're in extremely warm record conditions. And meanwhile, on the other side of the frontal system of the jet stream, we have uh, very cold conditions out west and up in the upper Great Plains. That's just meteorology. Typically, weather is governed by this series of wave patterns. Uh, you have troughs and you have ridges of high pressure. And so uh, here in the South, we're underneath one of those high uh, ridge patterns, whereas in the West and parts of the middle country, they're under the trough, which tends to have cold air in at this time of year. So it's not strange from a meteorological perspective. It's just the amplitude of this event is quite severe. Is 80 degree weather in February in Atlanta a norm or are you no. sweating? <laughs> In fact, I wrote an article in Forbes about that prior to the one that we're speaking about. And I, I asked that very question, Brittany, that you just asked. I said, is, is it early to have 80 degree temperatures in Atlanta? We, we broke the all time since record keeping record for February here in Atlanta with an 81 degree temperature on Wednesday. In fact, we tend to not see our first 80 degree temperatures here in Atlanta until March. 
And so uh, to have 81 degrees in mid to late February certainly is rare. It's not unprecedented. There have been a few other cases, but uh, typically here in North Georgia and Atlanta area, typically around March. Now, if you get further south in the Southern Georgia and Florida and the Gulf Coast, they can see 80s uh, into late February. But here in the Atlanta area, it's a little bit early to have our first 80 degree temperatures. And that worries me. It sounds good because, oh, great, we can have our cookouts and hang out in our shorts and so forth. But things start blooming and we have an earlier allergy season when we see those kind of kind of early warm temperatures as well. So there's always a trade off. It's been pretty mild in the Northeast as well, as we know this winter. I'm currently in New York. There's only been a few days, really, that I had to bust out the scarf, the gloves, the hat. So can we expect that this is the last major winter storm this season? No, absolutely not. I mean, I was just telling my son recently, even here in Atlanta, some of our biggest snowstorms come in March. So even though we expect 80 degree temperatures, our first 80 degree temperatures in March, we can also have winter weather here in Atlanta. And so I know the New Yorkers have been a little bit of a snow drought uh, over the last several weeks, but don't don't give up hope if you want some snow. Uh, we can certainly see snow uh, into March, perhaps even into April in parts of the Northeast. So I, I, by no means would I say this is the last hurrah for winter. I do want to get back to Los Angeles County um, and their blizzard warning that was issued. Is this just a rare once in a 17 year occurrence? Or do you think that they could see more blizzard issue, more blizzard warnings issued later? Well, I know due to climate change, we are seeing a reduction in extreme cold events on average across the U.S. The scientific literature shows that. But that should not be interpreted as meaning we won't have winter weather. We certainly will continue to have winter weather because we will continue to have seasons. And so uh, we'll have to continue to watch for things like how much the polar vortex, which has always been there, uh, oftentimes that polar vortex can weaken some and really cold air can ooze into the U.S. from Canada and parts of the Arctic. And that leads to outbreaks like the cold event that we had in Texas, for example, a couple of years ago. So uh, I, I, I don't think that, you know, the, the literature is inconclusive as far as my knowledge in terms of how frequently California will have blizzards. I think it will continue to be a somewhat rare event. But there is research, Brittany, that suggests that climate change could have some impacts on the polar vortex weakening, which allows colder air to intrude into our country. Now, on the other hand, there's some research that's counter to that as well. So I think the jury's still out on that question. Well, we will have you back to break it all down for us. Dr. Marshall Shepard, thank you so much. Thank you, Brittany.